Hello everyone. I'm gonna do a special video here for both of my channels, One of the Nation's Rage and Faith for Freight. And it's gonna be kind of a, a strange video, or might seem kind of strange. Uh, not because of the content, but just like the the way that I'm setting everything up and, and editing it and everything. It's because when God speaks to us, and the Holy Spirit tells us things, it, it seems to come in uh, little sound bites, if you will, just little, just little pieces here and there, just little truths that he speaks to us about things. And so I'm recording what I feel like God is, is telling me. And I'd like to share it with everybody if, if you want to hear it. But it, I'm going to try to lay it out in a way so that it, it's kind of... Like each, each video clip is uh, related to the next. So I'm going to try to lay it out in that kind of a way to where it makes sense. It's not going to be linear. It's not going to be chronological. Uh, it's going to be kind of just here and there stuff that I'm going to try to put in the right order so that it fits. So thanks for watching and I hope you get a blessing from this. Welcome. I want to share something with you about God. I, uh, I went to this thing this past weekend and it was probably the best decision I've ever made next to, you know, just whenever I decided to turn to Jesus Christ in my life. Now, if you, uh, I actually shared my testimony on my main channel, One of the Nations Rage, uh, but if you've never heard my main testimony, then basically in 2010, God delivered me from drug addiction and uh, the occult, which I allowed both things into my life, and they were trying to destroy me, utterly destroy me, and rob me of my inheritance that God Almighty is calling me to claim. And you guys probably haven't ever seen me like this before, and I want to touch on that a little bit, okay? So, if anybody has watched my videos in the past, then you know what kind of person I have been. I'm not going to say am, I'm going to say have been, because... I'm not that person anymore. I feel like a completely different person after this weekend. So what am I talking about? Because usually it takes me a long time to get to the point. I just want to get straight to the point here. So the Bible says that we as believers, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So I just want to kind of kind of give you guys a summary of the awesome power of God. And it's just another example of what God can do in your life when you allow him to. Now, my previous videos, like I said, if you watch those then you, you could see, I could see, that I was not a very pleasant person. Now, I know a lot of times the thing to do on YouTube, if you have a channel, is to kind of create a character and perform in front of the camera. And I always said, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be raw. I'm going to be who I am. I was going through this season in my life where I was completely being attacked 
my faith was being attacked. My, my connection with all the relationships in my life was all being attacked. And, you know, that's what Satan does to us. If we allow him to, if we don't, if we don't stand up and claim the truth over our lives, that's what Satan will do to us. <clears throat> I was very miserable, which caused a lot of negativity. And, and, and not only that, like he was lying to me about God and I was believing it. But not only that, he was also lying to me about people around me and telling me lies about people around me and just putting these thoughts into my head that it's like in the end all I could do was just be this negative miserable person and you can you can sense it if you watch any of my videos especially from the past couple of years like it's just been really heavy and and a lot of that was just hurt just feeling pain just just my way of, of trying to cope with pain and and misery and and all these things that you know I thought you know that it was just it was my plate to eat from so to speak and, and it, it's what I had and well it may have been what I had at that point in time but not anymore all that's changed okay because I I went to this, it's like a, it's a conference, I went there this past weekend, it's called a Holy Spirit Encounter, and if you want to check them out, uh, check out their website on my shirt, but I was very reluctant to go to this thing this past weekend, and God, God had a lot to... <laughs> to work out in me this past weekend and I feel like a like I said I feel like a completely different person which makes a lot of sense because his word says that he will create a pure heart and a new mind in you and whenever you are born again you become a new creature in Christ Jesus so that's what this is all about and I just want to give you guys the testimony Holy Spirit encounter it's like a three-day uh, getaway where you you stay on this campus and it's just it's raw uh, just in your face up in your face up in your business kind of um, time that you spend you spend time learning about the Holy Spirit you learn you spend time uh, praying, you spend time in worship, you spend time crying out to God. You know, we're always a work in progress, and thank God that He's merciful. Thank God that that His love is unending. There's no end to His love. He is patient, He's merciful, and He wants us, you know. He, he, he wants to give us more of Himself. But in order to receive more of Him, we got to give more of ourselves to Him to receive Him in return. And it's, it's not like, it's not like you, you go to church, you know, every Sunday or, you know, it's, it, it's not religious. It's not religious at all. It's, it's a lifestyle. And it's not a lifestyle of religion either. It's a lifestyle of awakening. It's a lifestyle of seeking first the kingdom of heaven. It's a lifestyle of laying yourself down daily, dying daily, uh, taking up your cross, and giving God all that you have. That's, that's what it is. That's where the answers are. And in that, and I know that Christians, we've heard these scriptures so many times and even tried to practice these these scriptures so many times but I just had a real breakthrough and 
you know, I just had this revelation, this this part of my my soul uh, that he touched that's deeper than any part of me that he's touched before. And so what does that what does that mean? Like that means a lot of stuff. I don't have all the answers about that, but those scriptures are the gateway, the invitation into heavenly realms where Jesus Christ is interceding for us for, before the Father. It's it's an invitation into the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because He's inviting us into that relationship. He wants us in that relationship. So what does that mean exactly? Well, what I'm gathering just from you know this week after going to this conference, this three-day conference this past weekend, is that He's always with us. He wants this relationship with us all the time, always, always with us. And the Holy Spirit, I'm going to talk more about the Holy Spirit in this video, but the Holy Spirit is always talking to us. He's always talking to us. He's always sharing things with us. He's always speaking. He's always declaring things about the glory of God, about the beauty of God, about love, godly love, perfect love. He's always speaking to us. Now, before, what I heard all the time was, you're not good enough. You don't measure up. You can't do this. Um, everybody hates you. Uh, nobody likes you. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Nobody wants to... You know, and it got so bad, it got to the point to where I couldn't really talk to people. All I could do was talk to a camera. That's why I have these like two hour long videos where it's just me doing my job and, and complaining about things is because I didn't, I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. So I talked to the camera and I put it on YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's not funny, but it kind of is like, but now... I'm not listening to the lies anymore. Because that's what Satan does. He, he lies to us. He's the father of lies. He's the deceiver. He is the accuser. He accuses us always before God. He accuses us. All the while, at the same time, Jesus Christ is interceding for us. And like I said, the Holy Spirit, He will talk to you. He will talk to you if you let Him in, if you activate Him in your life, in, in your body, in your spirit, in your soul. How do you do that? You do that by dying daily and laying down your cross. The Holy Spirit is always moving. The Spirit of God, the, the, the Word of God says that the Spirit of God is, is always searching, always moving across the earth, searching for those that are seeking him. And so that's that's what dying daily is. It's it's putting out all the cares of this world, laying down idols, things that you spend way too much time doing. Giving all that time back to God because it's all his to begin with. You know, he gives us free will, but it's laying down that will that we have that free will and saying, no, God, thank you for my free will, but I'm going to choose you. I don't, even even though part of me want, might want to do something else, no, I, I'm going to choose you because I know that you have good things in store for me. And your plan over my life means so much more to me than these little things that try to distract me. So, by... By dying daily, by taking up your cross, laying down your life, you are you're actually stepping into this position to where you can connect with Him. And like I said, He's always moving. And sometimes He's He's easier to connect with than other times. But Jesus, He's He's moving, and the Holy Spirit is what what connects us with Jesus. And like I said, I'm going to talk more about this in the remainder of the video, but laying down your life, taking up your cross, becoming more like Jesus, the man, Jesus, the, 
the way that we learn about Him by, by reading the Bible. By doing all these things, we, we, are, we are finding Him. We're, we're picking Him up in our radar. He always knows where we are. But we're actually we're locating Him. We're, we're connecting with Him. We're automatically coming into to the position to connect with Him. I hope that makes sense. That's what we're doing. When, when, we, when we die daily, when we take up our cross, when we lay our lives down, when we pour ourselves out, we're, we're getting into the only position to where we can receive from God. So, I just want to say, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to vouch for myself. And I was in a horrible place. Even the last video that I made, I think I made my, my last video in September, maybe uh, sometime in mid-September. So a couple months ago is when I made the last Faith for Freight video. And guys, I was not doing good. I was not on a good path at that point. I, I, was, I was not where I, I needed to be, for sure. I was carrying things. I was carrying baggage. And that's what happens when we, when um, we as believers, we don't, we don't listen to the word, and we don't do what the word says. We don't seek first the kingdom of heaven. Um, that's what happens. We pick up baggage. We are uh, spirit, soul, and body. That's what we are made up of as human beings. And most of the time. Most people don't don't uh, deal with the spiritual part. Uh, so basically, they're a soul, and you know, as as a soul, because our souls are eternal, our spirits are eternal, our bodies are finite. Our bodies, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna lose these bodies that we're in while we're alive on this earth. You know, we're we're gonna be put back in the ground when we go our bodies are going to return back to the dust but most people even a lot of Christians I'm not going to say all Christians that's definitely not true either but a lot of Christians me being one of them actually we're a soul okay that's where that's where everything is that's our core that's our center we're, we are a soul so it's our choice each day to either turn toward the Spirit and seek the things of God. If we believe in Jesus Christ, we have that invitation. Uh, our, our sins, everything that separated us from God, once we believe in Jesus Christ, they are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we automatically have access into the spiritual realm of the throne of God. So we have that choice every day if we're saved, if we have salvation. We have the Holy Spirit when we're saved. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We all have the Holy Spirit. Regardless of if you uh, are active and you exercise anything in the Spirit, any spiritual gifts or anything, even if you don't do that, you still have the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. You receive Him when you receive Christ as your Savior, when you repent, when you confess your sins, when you take on the belief of what Jesus Christ did, and He becomes your Lord, your Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus, when He was here on the earth, He promised that when He left the earth and He went back, He ascended back to the Father, that He would send us another Helper, our Counselor, our Strength, the, the great teacher, the Holy Spirit, He promised us the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that's what we all receive when we receive salvation. It's just up to us to, to uh, engage, encounter, ignite the Holy Spirit within us. And that's what brings us to life. That's what brings the Word to life. That's what delivers us from all the baggage that we carry all the addiction that we carry, you know, all the, you know, anything that attaches itself to us. And here's the thing. If you believe 
in Jesus Christ, you believe in the Word of God, then you have to believe in the Holy Spirit. And guess what? If you believe in the Holy Spirit, then you got to believe in Satan, too. you got to believe that if there's a kingdom of heaven, then there's a kingdom of darkness as well. And we're all susceptible to it. You know the Bible calls Satan the prince of the power of the air? That he has dominion over this earth? Spiritual dominion over this earth? And without Jesus Christ, we have no way of overcoming that. See, the thing is, Jesus Christ, when he laid his life down, he he went, he died on the cross, okay? He shed his blood. He went into the tomb. He was in the tomb for three days, but the Bible says that he descended into the pits of hell. He robbed death. He got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And then he was resurrected on the third day. He came back. So he took upon our sin, he took our sin to hell. And we all, none, none of us are worthy of that. He did it out of love for us. He took on our sin. He took our punishment. He took our punishment for the things that we've done and the things that we'll do throughout the remainder of our life. He took it on himself. And he took the judgment of it and went to hell. But when he was in hell, he took the keys of death. And he was victorious over the grave. That's why he resurrected. He came back. And when he came back, he sought his disciples. He sought his, his, uh, his people. And he promised them. He, he actually stayed and, and inhabited... Uh, his people for 40 days, I believe that's what uh, the Gospels say, before he ascended to the Father. He actually came back for a while. And he promised that the Holy Spirit would come when he ascended to the Father. And those of you that know the Bible, you know I'm telling the truth. That's what the Bible says. It goes from the Gospels into Acts. And in, the, in, in Acts chapter 2, that's when the Holy Spirit comes on the scene. That's when his disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit. And it, and it made all the difference. It made them bold. They got fire. They got... You, you, you guys know the Bible says that, that God is an all-consuming fire. And if we have his Spirit within us, then we are called to burn. Burn. Every day of our life. Every day of our life. And when we're in that position... It's a position, like I said before, of laying yourself down daily. But you receive fire from heaven when you do that. You receive boldness. You receive the Word. You receive the grace to walk in the Spirit. Going back to what I said earlier uh, about having the choice. We, we, as being eternal souls... That's, that's our main core. So we have the choice of either turning to our flesh every day, which is the natural thing to do. It's the easy thing to do. It's the wide gate. It's the wide gate. That's what it is. It's the wide gate. It's, I mean, you're automatically headed in that direction. If you're, not, if you're not seeking the kingdom of God, if you're not pursuing God... If you're not following the first and the second commandments, then you're automatically swaying toward the wide gate, which the Bible clearly says leads to destruction. It's a conscious choice, okay? And it and it's a little rough in the beginning because you gotta fight your flesh to do it. But I'll tell you one thing, and and, and that's what that's kind of the, the position that I've been in for so many years is you know, on and off, having these uh, these brief encounters with the Holy Spirit, and these these brief, uh, very short seasons with the Holy Spirit, seeking Him, getting small breakthroughs, but then uh, inevitably, you know, just just turning back to my flesh, living in my flesh. But. I want that to end. I, I want that to finally come to an end because he's worthy of more. He's worthy of more than that. One of the biggest issues that I struggled with was 
picking up on the emotions of those around me and all the negativity that festers in society and there's hate there's rage there's aggression there's intolerance there's uh, there's blame there's shame all these different devices that Satan uses against mankind to bring mankind down and put more space between man and God all of these things and so you see what what you're starting to see more and more especially me being a truck driver I'm I'm always on the road you know I'm seeing lawlessness more and more you know people breaking the law people doing crazy things people doing desperate things people they're, they're just they're fed up they're fed up with their lives they're fed up with with the world the the leaders uh, they're fed up with the church they're fed up with even themselves some of them some of them are really struggling with pride I was for sure but you know some people that they're just they're overcome by their shame some people are overcome by pride and they think that they're the only ones that are right and their opinion is the only opinion that matters and the biggest thing that I feel like the Holy Spirit told me about you know what goes on on this earth as far as people is that people are hurting people are hurting so much and it's all just it's all just because of a lie from Satan God loves people God loves all people he doesn't love the things that they do. Some of the things that they do. He, he hates sin. Okay? But he loves people. God does not look at us the way that we look at each other. He doesn't. His ways are so far above our ways. He holds the key. He sees us struggling. So I was reading the red letters in Matthew, doing the red letter uh, reading program where you, you basically you go through all the Gospels and you, you read the chapters with the red letters, which is all the words that Jesus spoke. You, I'm sure you know that, but a, a way, it, it just it like stood out to me it was like screaming off the page but a way to describe how i used to talk about things so negatively and so judgmentally i just want to read this couple couple of scriptures here it's in matthew chapter 12 it's uh 33 through 37 it's the subtitle of a tree known by its fruit and so I'll just read this it's Jesus speaking he says either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad for a tree is known by its fruit. He's speaking to the Pharisees. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's, that's what really stood out to me the most. Is, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Good treasure of his heart. 
brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Okay, so I'm going to pause there and I'm going to say what I've done in previous videos, like Faith for Freight videos, is I've I've said evil things out of the evil treasure. Well, right now I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to bring forth the good things out of a good treasure that's in my heart now. And before, it wasn't like that. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And I know, like, I don't even have to go there, but I'm just going to in James, where uh, he basically says, he says the same thing in uh, different terms. James chapter 3, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we will all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth, does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs. Thus no spring yields both salt, water, and fresh. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not preaching on, you know, words or how you, how you talk or anything else, but I'm just saying it's without the Holy Spirit, when we're just trying to make it on our own, we're not walking in the spirit. We're, we're walking in our flesh. We don't have that treasury in our heart. We haven't built it up in our heart. So we're actually, by speaking all the curses and all the negative words that we use, all the negative words that I used to use, that I don't want to use anymore, Well, I read it, so I just wanted to show that to you. I think it's it's pretty impactful, and I love the way that that James puts it right there. That basically, something so small can steer and direct you, your tongue. You know, the words that you choose to speak into the air. That's why praise is so powerful. That's why you can get victory in your praise. Is because 
you are lifting your voice, you're, you're sending sound into the atmosphere. It's touching spirit. It's touching the spiritual realm. It is. If your tongue can be set on fire by hell, then your tongue can also be set on fire by the Holy Spirit. And so you can speak life. You can change your direction right now by the way that you're speaking. You can change your course. I was hurting a lot. And during that period of time, yeah, I prayed. I went to church. Uh, I read the Bible. I listened to sermons. But my prayer life with the Holy Spirit was technically non-existent. And I didn't interface with God in that kind of a way. So it was like every time I would come before God, it was always a, please help me, please save me. Why can't I do this? You know, please deliver me kind of thing. Um, and I just remember always coming before God and, and I would, I would feel the presence of God whenever I was praying, but I was always petitioning him saying, you know, forgive me, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm doing these things. I know this isn't right, but then I would go back and, and just do it over again. And it was an endless cycle and it lasted for years. And so <clears throat> I didn't ever really grow in prayer. And, and that's one of the, you know, the three tools, which I'm going to talk about later in the video. So my prayer life wasn't very strong. Because every time I tried to pray, I was always, you know, in shame. And I was always, I always just felt guilty because I was believing everything that the enemy was saying about me, to me. I believed it. You know, I thought that, that it was true and it's not true. It's not true. He put shame on us. He, he tries to hang the garment of shame over us for the things that we do. But the blood of Jesus says that we're free. The blood of Jesus delivers us. The blood of Jesus is potent. It will break through. It will tear that garment off of you and say, no, that's not who you are. You are who I say you are. Do not be deceived. So, I will say this, that even if you're in sin right now, just know that God, He is not shocked by your sin. He knows your story. He knows your beginning to your end. He knows. He's not shocked by it. He's not pleased by it, but He's not shocked by it. And it doesn't change his love for you. So if that's all you can do every time you try to pray is, is say, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's already saying you're forgiven. If you can't get past that, how are you going to move forward? How are you going to get out of the sin unless you take his hand? And you get beyond that point of guilt and shame. I know it's real. I know the I know that the shame and the guilt is real, and I know that that's the the effect of sin. That's that's what it does to us. But he's paid for it. He's already paid for it. So the only way to get out of it is to move beyond that. 
Don't let your sin hold back your prayer life. If you want to grow, engage with him. He's got so much to say about you. He's got so much to say to you. Some of it, yeah, is it deals with sin. Some of it does. But not everything that he has to say to you is about that. He's got much to say to you. So let the prayer conversation grow. Instead of petitioning God all day. I've actually heard somebody say it like this. Like, instead of putting in your uh, 25 cent prayer like it's a gumball machine or something. And, and spinning the little dial and, and getting, getting your uh, 25 cent gumball from the Holy Spirit when you pray. Make it a conversation. Ask him. Ask him questions. Ask him questions about the word. Ask him questions about your life, your plans. Ask him questions about everything. You can never exhaust him. He's there for you. He wants to have a conversation with you. And he wants it to go beyond, please help me, please help me, please help me. He wants to have a real conversation with you. He wants intimacy with you. And that's the only way that you can be healed. Do you know that there's a narrative, a godly narrative over your life? There's also an, a narrative of darkness over your life at the same time. It's like I was saying with the, uh, the wide gate and the narrow gate. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a person, but the end of that pathway is death. So you've got two narratives over your life. You've got two beings speaking over your soul as you live every moment of your life. You've got Jesus, who is the intercessor, the ultimate intercessor who's given us the Holy Spirit and then you've got the deceiver the destroyer the one that comes to kill still and destroy you've got Satan speaking lies over your life okay like I said before he wants to drag you into the pit of hell he wants you to give in to despair he wants you to give in to fear he wants you to read the Bible and say, I can't do this. This is too hard. I'll never be able to do this. I'll never measure up. And none of that's true, okay? None of that's true. He wants to make you feel like you're worthless. But God says you're priceless. You are His inheritance. He speaks that over you. Your calling comes from His design. He created you. Satan didn't create you. So how can he speak anything over you? He doesn't have the right to speak anything over you. I break that off of you. I believe that for the longest time. And he's so generic. He's not original. He tries to copy God. But he does the same thing over and over and over again. He's really good at it. But it's, it's almost, you know, if you look back on your life and the mistakes you've made... It's repetitive. That's the way it is with me. It's always been the same same cycles over and over again. I just couldn't get through it. I couldn't see past it. But God values us so high. Why else would He come? And why would an eternal being become a man, take on mortal flesh, become a man? Stay here on the earth for 33 years and in that entire time commit no sin, but then take on all the sin of humanity and receive the judgment of God for it. As heavy as that is, all, think about all the sin that will ever be committed. He's already paid for it. Why would He do that if we were not valuable to Him, if He did not treasure us? Guys, the 
The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully created. He he formed us. He he spoke over us before he created the universe. He he spoke over each one of us. We were made in his image and he spoke over each one of us. He says, "This is the narrative for you, not just your mortal life, not just while you're here on the earth. This is the narrative for you that I'm speaking for all eternity." Our lifetimes on this earth are like this big and eternity is like huge. Our narrative doesn't end at the end of the age. At the end of your life, your narrative doesn't end. But it goes back to the free will thing. Because knowing that God has a narrative for your life, that God has a plan for your life, He's put a calling on your life. He's given you special giftings. He's given you special abilities that are completely unique to you and no one else. You can reflect His light in a way that nobody else can. Nobody else can. Think about that. Don't you want to know more about your narrative? I know I do. So that motivates me to walk in, in the Spirit and, and deny my flesh. So I've spoken on the narrative, talked about that, and how powerful that is, and, and how much, you know, if you can start to connect with God's narrative over your life, and what God is declaring over you as His eternal child, that he created, that he fashioned and designed so intricately, so uniquely. You know, we can't we can't see our spirits, we can't see our souls. But the fact that, that the Bible says that we were created in his image and we're so we're we're all so unique and so different. We all have our own DNA. You know, you, you can just see reflections of it. In the physical world, it's reflecting the spiritual world. And so now that I've talked about the personal narrative that God has over you, and I've talked a little bit about the first and the second commandment, I'll just I'll just go over that. The first commandment, everybody knows it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself okay so everybody has heard those two commandments but think about the second one okay i've been talking about the first one laying laying down your life taking up your cross but loving your neighbor as yourself when you truly experience the love that god has for you and you receive it, you accept it, you let go of the, the doubt, and you really feel the, the, just the potent love that God has for you as His creature that He created. And <clears throat> you, you experience it to your capacity, meaning that you, let, you have let go of all other loves all other lovers all lesser things and it's just you and god and you're experiencing his love over you you're experiencing him rejoicing over you in heaven as his lamb one of his many lambs and how much he treasures you and how much he he does for you he provides for you when you experience that and it overflows, that's where the second commandment comes in, to love your neighbor as yourself. But a lot of times we, we do hear that and we, we, hear the first, we hear all about the first commandment, loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, experiencing his love, and then having that love come gushing out of us, lighting up our lives, shining our light before men, loving other people. 
But there's also another por important element in that. And that is love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. As yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. I think that that's overlooked a lot because denying yourself, well, how can you love yourself if you deny yourself? It's because you deny your flesh, yourself, your flesh. That's, that's the part of you that you're denying. You're, you're denying that, that human nature to get easily offended. You're denying your pride. You're laying all that fleshly stuff down. You're laying all that carnal stuff down. But you can still love yourself. We can't love ourselves as much as God loves us. We, we, our love will never compare to His love. It's not possible. But you can love what God proclaims over you. You can love yourself because of what God says about you. You can take God's love for you and love yourself. Love what God loves. See what God sees. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you what the Father sees when He looks at you. And when you can do that, you can ask the Holy Spirit to show you what the Father sees about anybody else. You can love others. But it's important that we love ourselves because you can't love anybody if you can't love yourself. And again, it's a different kind of love for yourself. It's loving what God declares over you instead of loving the carnal self. You see the difference? Don't be afraid to shine your light. Whatever God speaks over you, don't be afraid to let your light shine before people. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't let Satan steal that from you. That's one of the first things that he's going to go go for. As soon as you get saved, that's, that's one of the first things he goes for. He tries to tear you down. But no, don't let that happen. If, if that's already happened, you can get it back. Get it back. Get it back. But what God declares about you, and what, who God says you are, I know it's an, it's an endless journey. It's a daily thing. But the more we stay in tune with Him, the more we'll know about who we really are and the more we can declare who we are and be that light. So, the inevitable thing that's going to happen, and we all know it's going to happen, it happens over and over again, when the enemy comes to rob you of your blessings, what do you do? Well, you know, if you, if you spend the majority of your time interfacing with the Holy Spirit, you're going to learn more about God. You're going to, you're going to see more of God. You're going to know who God is, and you're going to be able to discern the difference between the voice of the enemy and the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. So when it's the enemy coming against you, trying to lie to you, trying to attack your mind, trying to tear down your faith or whatever God has promised in your life, okay, how do you defend yourself? You defend yourself with the Word of God. That's why part of this laying yourself down taking up your cross, dying daily. It's not only a, a constant interface with you and the Holy Spirit through prayer and worship. I can't tell, I can't even begin to tell you guys this. I, if I kept going, this video would never end, but I can't begin to tell you guys how important it is to praise God. Praise God. Psalm 150. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everything. Praise God. Praise Him. Worship Him. It's also taking up the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. Defend yourself with the eternal words. The words that will last. When, when this earth is long gone, 
the words of God are forever. That's what the word says. These words are forever. They're from the beginning and they, they will be eternal. They are eternal. They will last forever. And the thing is, Satan knows the word. So we've got to know the word. Satan knows the word of God. He does. It, I know some people might find that as shocking, but he does. So if you don't believe me, then read Matthew chapter 4. I believe is what it is. When when Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, and then he is caught up and driven into the wilderness, and he's on his 40-day fast, and Satan comes to him to tempt him. And every single time Satan tempts him with something, he uses the word to tempt him with. And what does Jesus say? He says, it is written. And then he uses the word to counteract the lie that Satan is trying to use against him to deceive him. That's what we have to do. That's, that is our archetype. That is our strategy, is to use the word. So I'm talking about interfacing with the Holy Spirit through prayer and intimacy, fasting. I've got to get the fasting thing down. I'm, I'm working on that. Um worship worshiping god praising god all day long every day with what with what we can you know let everything that has breath praise the lord it's also the word we've got to interface with with the eternal word of god it is living it is alive and it wants to it wants to infiltrate your being the word of God, he, he, he wants to infiltrate. He wants to write his words on your heart. So it's those three things that sustain us and protect us from the lies of the enemy. It, it, those are the three things. That's how we defend. That's how we defend our inheritance. That's how we sustain our relationship with God. And I know it, and you guys know it. He's worthy He's worthy of all that we have to give. And it makes such a difference when you choose to seek His kingdom first. It makes such a difference when you walk in the Spirit instead of the flesh. Because here we are, we're a soul. The, the, the Word of God says that the Spirit and the flesh are always at battle with each other. Okay? They're always at battle with each other. The The... The Spirit automatically seeks after the kingdom of God, the things of God. Well, not, I, I won't say automatically. I mean, I guess it, I can say automatically. If you're engaged, then that's automatically what the Spirit seeks after. But the flesh seeks after corruption, and corruption leads to death. And so, basically, what you've got is you've got a battle going on within yourself every day. It's a battle. It's a struggle. It really is. It's a struggle. But I'll tell you that if you if you lay yourself down, it's like Jesus said, those who seek to save their own lives and go that natural path will lose their lives. Those who live in the flesh, you're going to lose the meaning of who you are and what you are, what God speaks over you. But if you lay your life down for the sake of Jesus Christ, for the gospel, for His kingdom, which is coming, it's coming, it's here and it's also coming. If you lay yourself down daily and you, you turn to Him and you build this relationship with Him and you get oil, you get oil in your lamps, you get oil of the Holy Spirit in your vessel from the time that you spend before God every day. You'll get deliverance. You'll get victory. You'll get victory over things that you've struggled with. And guys, I want to tell you right now that all you got to do is go back and watch some of those videos. I, I was struggling with a spirit of heaviness. I was struggling with a spirit of fear. I was struggling with a spirit of doubt, addiction, all these horrible things and I got deliverance 
this past weekend uh, when I went to this this Holy Spirit encounter. So that's mainly what this was about. I wanted to share this testimony with you and, and the difference that it's making in my life every day. And see, the thing is, I got them, and I'm not going to let them go. I'm not going to let them go. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to who I was before this weekend. This past weekend came. I can't. So many things that I used to struggle with that would just weigh on my emotions and stress me out and, and exhaust me and make me feel miserable. I was I was under the sway of darkness. I was under the sway of the enemy. He was eating away at me. Because here's the thing. This is what he does with all believers. He says, okay. He says, okay. If I can't have your soul, if I can't drag you into hell with me, then I'm going to do what I can to make you unproductive in the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to come against your mind. I'm going to start surrounding you and lying to you because, like I said, the Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. All we got to do is step out of our door. And, and I mean, sometimes not even that. Like, depending on the kind of stuff that you bring into your house, maybe you invited him into your house already. Maybe he's in your house attacking your mind. Maybe you bring all that stuff in with you every day from, from the world around you, all the negativity, all the, all the stuff that's just eating away at mankind, at humanity, all that stuff. I mean, here's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit frees you from all that stuff. It takes away the fear of men, so you don't care anymore. You just want to, you just want to serve God. You just want to follow Jesus. You just want to pour yourself out. You get the oil of joy. You get the oil of joy on you and in you. And it's amazing. And you can talk to people about this. You have power. You carry power when you have the Holy Spirit. You do. We all have that potential. Like I said, He's in all of us if we believe in Jesus Christ. It's just a matter of activation. Okay? Oh, God, you're awesome. You're awesome. He's powerful. He's powerful. He, he will change your life. He will give you a pure heart. He will give you a new mind if you allow Him to. The thing is, He is gentle with His people. He will not force Himself on anybody. You have to ask. The Bible says, ask. Ask of me. Ask of me and you, you shall receive. Jesus said, if... If you being evil give good gifts to your children, what will the Father give to you if you ask Him? Ask Him. Ask Him to stir you up. Ask Him. Give Him permission to come in you. Give Him permission to ignite your heart with holy fire and burn for Him. Burn for Him. He is worthy. He is worthy. As we approach, you know, the end of this age and things get darker in this world that the exact opposite is happening with the church with the kingdom of heaven that's here on the earth in the body of Christ the exact opposite is happening as things get darker and Satan gets more desperate because he knows his the, the end of his reign on this earth is drawing near he's getting more and more desperate and he's going to try to destroy everything so at the same time the church, the body of Christ, is going to receive a greater anointing of the Holy Spirit. Holy fire is going to fall. It's going to transform all of us. But we have to get ready. We have to prepare. If we want more, then we have to be able to engage with what is available right now. We have to be ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. That's what I, that's what I uh, feel like the Spirit is saying. To all believers, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. So I just want to declare that over you today. If, if you believe, if you believe, if you want more of God in your life, because I'm telling you, 
It is awesome. It is awesome. And I hope you guys can see the difference in me. I hope you can. God is worthy. He's amazing. I know. I've heard all this before too. But no matter how many times you say it, it's powerful and it's the truth, okay? Speak the truth over yourself, okay? Speak the truth. Speak the Word of God over yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to come in to reveal things to you. You know, the Holy Spirit, He's the ultimate physician. He, he will show you things about yourself. He'll show you areas in your life that He wants to heal. Uh, another really big thing about this Holy Spirit encounter that, that I experienced this past weekend was called a prayer room. And, you know, I, I went in there. First of all, I went to the Holy Spirit encounter carrying a bunch of junk, a bunch of issues, a bunch of baggage within me. When I went into this prayer room, I was thinking, you know, because it, it was two other guys, you know, and they they were talking to me and they were asking me, you know, <clears throat> questions and telling me to ask the Holy Spirit questions and show me things. And I was thinking, well, you know, they're they're going to know they're going to know that all this stuff that I'm carrying, they're going to know about the spirit of addiction, you know, the spirit, all, all these spirits different things that I that I've been battling with for years I already knew that 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 was gonna happen but the one thing they did that surprised me is they didn't they didn't go for the issues that that I was even having at that time they they went for the root and what I mean by that is they they basically asked me think back to the very first time you were ever hurt think back to the memory of the first time that anybody ever hurt you because there's there there are deep rooted things within our souls that keep us from touching or, or, there are deep rooted things in our souls that keep truth from touching that part of our soul there, there might be things in your soul that you've been holding on to since your childhood, since your first memories. Th there might be subconscious things that you're holding on to that you carry every day that's causing deception within you. It's, 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 it's completely affecting your perspective on conscious reality. There, there might be generational curses. There might be, you know... A history of abuse from your childhood it could be anything like that a lot of these problems that I was you know talking about in in society a lot of it is personal a lot of it, it it's from within and it comes outward and it's not good and it's not true and it's it's the root of all the issues a lot of a lot of problems that we carry have to do with unforgiveness and so that's what this was. And, and, and I have my own personal story about it. I'm not going to share it in this video. But basically, there are things that I had held on to from childhood that I gave, I, I, I laid them down at the cross. You know, there was unforgiveness in me that I totally overlooked. I was just so used to, you know, carrying that stuff so deeply within me from my first memories and, and, and even subconsciously things that I didn't even know about things, things that I had forgotten about that I'm just so used to living with that, I, that I didn't think about it anymore. And it was affecting everything. So I gave it to God and God, that's, that was, that's where he touched me in that area that, that he, he couldn't touch me before. Like that deep part of my soul. That that his truth, his light was just aching 
to touch, to go, to go down into that deep depth of my soul. Memory is so powerful. Well, when that was lifted from me, and I finally connected with God at that deep, deep level, that's where I got the deliverance. That's where I got the freedom. You know, one thing that coming before God daily, taking your cross up, laying your life down will do is not only will it help you find where, where the Spirit is and what the Spirit's doing so that you can run with Jesus spiritually and you can, you can do His work. As, as part of his body, you can actually do the work of Jesus by, by laying yourself down daily. Not only that, I mean, this is pretty much the same thing, but it, it, it's so personal and it's so unique to each and every single one of us and our callings. You know, I grew up thinking that, you know, to have a calling in God meant that, that you were called to be a pastor or a preacher or anything like that. But that, that limits it so much. No, if you are, if you are in the business place, if you're a truck driver like I am, if you are uh, an author, if you are, if you're anything, if you're in childcare, if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're a stay-at-home dad, if you're anything, a mechanic, anything you can think of, okay, that's your calling, and that's that's where your ministry lies. And every single thing that you do is important. Every single breath that you take is important. That's why the Word says that whatever you do with your hands, do it with all your might and do it as unto the Lord. So if you take that verse and you mix it with, let us uh, present ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, you take those two things, you intertwine them because they both go together. Every single day of your life is important. And what, what he's doing when you when you lay your life down and you, you leave yourself at the door and you leave all your other things at the door and you say, okay, God, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do? What are we going to do? And you do it together. You do it together. You run with him and he runs with you. And like I said, the Holy Spirit is always speaking. He will tell you things about other people. You know, He will tell you ways to bless other people. He will, t he will tell you, He might, he might uh, show you a piece of trash on the ground and tell you to pick it up. He could, he could do anything like that. I, I guarantee you, it sounds silly, but go pick that piece of trash up and I guarantee you that you'll, you'll get holy ecstasy out of it. You will feel amazing. You'll feel incredible about it. Maybe not always, but sometimes, yeah. And I think what he's doing is he's trying to show us that every single thing we do, the, the monotony, the, the mundane nature of what we do every day, it's all special. It, it can all be powerful. It's a thrill ride. When you have the Holy Spirit, it's, it's literally a thrill to do it. When before, if you're doing it in your flesh, you get old, it, it gets old, it makes you feel old, you get tired, you get wore down, you you just, and then you get the spirit of heaviness and you just, you're in a bad mood, you get, you get uh, offended easily, you get short with people, you're not practicing any of the fruits of the spirit when you're in your flesh, you just can't do it, you just can't do it. So, I just wanted to share that too, about you know how how special whatever your calling is whatever you're doing every day god wants to be a part of all of it he doesn't just want to meet you in a building once a week you know what i'm saying you you carry him in you you take him with you everywhere you go and he wants to be a part of all of it so I'm going to let you go because I've been talking for a while, but I think I said everything that I, that I feel like God wanted me to share with you guys. But I do want to pray with you um, before I go. I'm sitting here. Guys, look. 
I'm sitting here out in the pub. I'm, I'm actually at Costco. I'm waiting to get unloaded. But you know what? When I'm in this truck, this is a sanctuary for, for the Holy Spirit. This is a sanctuary um, for God. I will, uh, I will lift up His name. I will worship Him. Even while I'm doing my job. And, because you know what? Everything is His. Everything belongs to Him. And He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. So let's pray. You guys want to pray? We'll pray right here. We'll pray right here in the city of Morrow. Alright. So here's what we're going to pray. Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love and your passion for us, God. That there's a, a pleading passion that you have over your people. God, you, you, you desire us. And your desire for us is what makes us desire you. It's what makes us want you more. God, you're not distant from us. You're not distant from us. You're, you're in us. You're in us all the time. You're waiting for us. You're waiting for us to hear you beckoning to us. Come, bring yourselves. The Word of God says that because of the sacrifice that Jesus made, we can boldly go before the throne of God. I don't care. And, and, and it, okay, what I think doesn't matter anyway, but God, He sees where you're at, okay? If you're watching this, if you want to receive this right now, He's got something to give you. And He sees where you're at right now. And He tells you that you're His child. You're not an orphan. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break the orphan spirit off of whoever may be listening to this. And I release the spirit of adoption over that person. Over those people. It may be many people that see this. He loves you. He wants you. He is not shocked. If there's sin, if there's sin, if there's compromise, if you've been living in the compromise, if you're stuck in the mire of the sin, of your flesh, if you feel like there's no escape, if you've tried so many things, He's telling you, no, 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 don't run from me. I'm after you. I'm after you. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. I'm running after you faster than you can run away from me. And I want you, and I called you, and I chose you as a child of the kingdom of God. So just receive it, receive it. The Bible says that we are to go boldly before the throne of grace, to receive the mercy, the grace of God, to enable us to grow, to mature in our spiritual walk with God, to mature, to maturity. Guys, there's so much that is stored up in the storehouses of heaven for the believers. It's all spiritual. Guys, like I was saying, we are spirit, soul, and body. Do you guys know that we are more spirit than we are body? Do you guys know that there's more in existence that we don't see than what we actually see with our eyes? Paul says that what we see in the natural is just a reflection. It's just a reflection of all that really exists in the Spirit. So everything that we, we sense with our conscious minds is just a fraction of what's actually available. And I'm telling you guys, God has an endless supply of riches. That's why the, the Bible says to lay up treasure in heaven, not on this earth. So... I just want I want you guys to receive that. He wants to move in your life. He wanted to move in my life and I just I struggled, I battled with things. And this this is just a testimony that I had to share with you guys. I hope you guys receive it. The word of the Lord, he's awesome. Keep seeking his face. Keep seeking His hand and His face. I know some people say seek His face. Some people say seek His blessing. Seek His hand. Seek both. Okay? Don't just seek one. Seek both. Because He is your provider. He provides you with everything. 
Oh God, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. He's always with you. He is always with you. He's always there. He's always there. If you receive his love, guess what? He wants to fill you with his love until you're overflowing. And guess what? When you're overflowing with his love, it pours out of you and it touches all those that are around you. When Jesus said, let your light shine before men, that's what he meant. If you're not overflowing with the light of God, then you can't let your light shine before men. You're, you're bound. You're bound by the lies of Satan. But 1 John says that love perfected in the Father casts out all fear. There is no fear in love. Love vanquishes all fear. There's no fear. And guess what, guys? God loves you. He loves you with all that He is. He pursues you with all that He is, but guess what? He loves everybody around you, too. Even the people that that uh, might bother you, or, you know, the people that may offend you, or the people that may do evil things around you, guess what? He loves them, too. He loves them, too. That's why Jesus said, bless those who curse you. Bless your enemies. The, the weapons of our warfare are spiritual. They're not carnal. They're spiritual. There are spirits everywhere. Like I was saying before, it all goes back to what I was saying before. I'm going to let you guys go. I, I, oh, but there's so much that I, that I could share with you. I'm going to let you go, though, and I thank you for watching this video. God bless you. I hope you received this, like I said, and you guys have a blessed day. Thanks for watching.